Hello everyone and welcome to Ring Diaries here at Church of Uganda Family TV with me Fiona Mboa where we talk about anything and everything to do with marriage and we bring you real people sharing their real experiences so that we make marriage a better place than we are seeing it today. Uh, with me today is uh, a gentleman who has been married for five years. We were discussing earlier that I think five years is actually a very big number but mine is bigger. Yes, we are. I'm joined by Timothy Mugeni, who has mm. been married for five years, and is loving the the five years. Mm. <laughs> You're very welcome. Thank you very much for having me, Fiona. How mm. are you? I'm fine, thank you. Yes. So we are told the first five years, uh, uh, if you go through those ones, mm. you have made it in marriage. How you know, have yours been? You know the funniest thing people say when you go through the first five years. When we were in our first year, everyone said, you've, made, you've gone through the first six months, ah, you've made you it. Made it. <laughs> when we reached two years, ah, now you're professionals. When you reached three, ah, now you've, you've made it now. Mm -hmm. When we reached five, people are like, eh, you wow. have now made it. Yes. So it seems like every time you pass a milestone, everyone keeps on saying, now you have made it. It's a moving target. Yes, it's like a moving target. It keeps mm. on changing. People no, but keep on five saying, years, mm. five years, those first five years. A lot mm. comes up. Yes, of course, it's, it's, it's quite interesting in the first five years because in the five years, you're getting to one, uh, adjust to being together, mm. adjust to being married because uh, for all of your life up to the moment when you say, I do, you have lived your life alone. And then when you now have a person coming into the picture mm. and you are now living together, there are certain mannerisms that come in. Mm -hmm. um, you're a senior with more years than me. <laughs> But Mary, you might there is recall, no seniority it's okay. Uh, okay, you have more years yes. of experience. Mm. Uh, but you realize that in those in that period of time of the initial few months, you're getting used to one another. Yeah. What if the person snores? What if the person doesn't like laying the bed? What if the person says, "Ah, it's raining. I'm going to shower tonight." I know. Uh, all those all those small things that come into play, and you find that your characters are now conflicting mm. or they are not seeing eye to eye and you're consistently in a battle conversation on how are we going to make this work mm. and so i think the first few years i wouldn't say five years the first few years are like quite formative in terms of you are getting into the place of acceptance of one another mm. you're getting into the place of acceptance of <coughs> of each other in the terms of uh, loving one another in mm. terms of also caring for one another okay. and genuinely just learning to get married I yeah. don't know if that makes sense yes it does given that mm. we start marriage without any experience and they mm. just throw us in there mm. so today I want us to talk about appreciation in marriage mm. because we've had very many people saying my, my husband is not grateful my wife is not grateful when we were dating he used to do these things he stopped doing them mm. now is it even important mm. to start with? Is it even important to appreciate each other in marriage? I would say it's very, very, very important. I would say it's beyond beyond being together. Uh, the appreciation is something that is like the glue. Um, it's like in HR, people, people appreciate where they are working. And because they appreciate where they are working, they stay there. Mm. Now in marriage, how do you expect it to be any different? But you see, in HR, someone can change a job in marriage. Yes, you can't change in marriage, them. you can't change. Mm. And uh, the worst statement is people get discontent. They feel hurt. Mm. And they carry that pain as like a burden. And so appreciation is the most important, is a very, very important element. I'm not going to say it's the most important. But mm. it's so important because if you do not appreciate your spouse, someone else will start to do so. Mm. And not before long. It's a true story. Really? So let me give you let me give you a real story. Uh, for example, as a lady, if you get up, you get dressed, you're very smart, you feel like you're very smart. Mm -hmm. And your husband says no single word for Rarely do they say anything. Rarely do they. Mm -hmm. But then you go out and somebody else appreciates you. Mm -hmm. You're like, Oh, someone has appreciated me. Mm -hmm. So you're getting a boost in your self esteem from from a person who probably is not meant to be the one to be boosting you. Mm. So you find your validation is coming from other places. So then, uh, not before long, you find that you're seeking out time with your other friends because they value you. They say, oh, mm. Fiona is always smart. 
Mm-hmm. Fiona knows where I can do my hair. Mm-hmm. Fiona has these nice outfits. Mm-hmm. If we go, they might even give us a discount if we are negotiating mm-hmm. because Fiona is always uh, in a particular type of way. And that's, that's probably what happens. When the appreciation is lacking, the appreciation for your spouse also starts to dwindle. I don't know if that makes sense or your attraction starts to dwindle. Mm. It moves into like a place where where you go up like a car, like if let's say if it was a curve, you'd be going up on a high, especially like when you're dating, there's a lot of appreciation. Mm, yeah. And Ange, you're so smart, you're so Even nice, you're, you're sure so you're good, not. but what, what? <laughs> Even when you're not, they are complimenting you and it's just going up. Mm. Then you get married and then the appreciation is there, then it starts to plateau. you. Mm. Then not before long, it starts to dwindle a little bit. Then your birthday comes and it goes back up. Uh, then the children are born, then it goes back up. And it's not consistent or it's not growing as it used to. As a result, I'm not saying that it takes away from the marriage, but it, it removes a certain portion of joy mm. within the couple or even within the, the man or the woman. But mm. Timothy, I've had uh, someone say that if I told you I loved you on our wedding, mm-hmm. I'll tell you again when something changes. Mm. Like it should be a constant. You know I love you. Mm. So it's the same with that. I have I appreciated you. Mm. You know I appreciate you. Mm. If it changes, then I I should be able to tell you. Then I think people's personalities are different. I've had that statement before, but then uh, I don't know how to. I can't argue with that statement. Of course, I have told you, I have told you. The facts are the facts. But then there is also the element of reassurance that's mm. important. Uh, like a reminder. Um, I, don't know, I don't know what example I can use, mm. but it's so important to reassure your person of how you feel about them mm. so that they are aware that you value them, you value their opinion, you value their thoughts. Uh, as times and seasons change, people do change. Mm, uh, like, true. for example, when a lady gives birth, um, sometimes they do put on weight. Um, so your wife may be in a state where she's feeling like, I, I am not as beautiful mm. as I used to be. Yeah. But then you as the husband see them in a particular way. But if you said it on the wedding day, now maybe 30, 60 kilograms later, mm. things have changed uh, visually. And if you do not assure her that you actually still find her beautiful, what will happen? Because circumstances mm-hmm. have changed. Times and seasons have changed. It's like saying, uh, let me use a car as an example. Okay. You buy a Benz today. Mm-hmm. You're like, Manage, my Benz is the one. Mm-hmm. After, two, after about six months, there will be a new Benz that comes out. After two years, there will be another Benz that comes then out. Then you forgotten you. So the circumstances surrounding your, your standard of what you have called beautiful have changed. Mm. As a result, is it still beautiful? Regardless so of your, the change regard, in regarding the cha- Regardless of the change in circumstance mm. or the environment. So that's why I feel appreciation is important. Mm. Because if I do not, if I appreciate you once and I leave it at that, mm. and let's say the situations or circumstances are the same, then maybe it's okay. But if, let's say, I have grown older, I look different, mm. uh, we have shifted locations, we have shifted places, all those things, then appreciation is necessary to come back. Mm. Yeah. Okay. I'm glad you've answered that. It has always, I've had a conversation with someone and it has always, like I fail to get an answer to that. Mm. Because they're like, if I've told that person, mm. what has changed? If it had changed, I would actually tell you. Mm. But thank you for answering that. You wanted, you wanted to send like an SMS. Mm. I would like to hear by inform you <laughs> that the love for you has not has changed. Not changed. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, um, Timothy, when you talk about appreci- uh, appreciating people, Everyone mm. thinks it is a women thing. Mm. It's the women that want to be appreciated. Mm. It's the women that want to be celebrated. Do men also want to be appreciated? Yes, I believe they do. Why? They are kings. They know it. They are kings, but why do they give gifts to kings? Kings, okay. kings do also appreciate things. I think the, sorry to say this, but a stereotype that's out there is that Sometimes men don't want things. Hmm. But sometimes... You act like you don't want things. Yes, because uh, sometimes the men are the ones supposed to foot the bill of, like, let's say they are birthday presents. Yeah, uh, I don't think it has gotten that it's bad. It's not that bad. <laughs> uh, but uh, what I'm saying is, uh, 
like sometimes men communicate like what let me use the example of gifts for example mm. a man may not say i want this directly sometimes they will say i want this like let's say a football fan i like the latest man new jersey when it comes out i like mm. the latest astro jersey whatever it be and they articulate that uh but then maybe for you as the wife football is not the thing that you feel is you very important is you don't even mm. know you probably know he supports soccer but you don't know which, which team, team and what yes, so now true. if you were to appreciate him and value him with a gift of something that he desires and wants don't you think there is that kind of joy that he would also have do you people even get joy you just <laughs> I think you should try. Yeah, it's a you should try surprising your husband with a full tank of fuel. <laughs> you will see. No, that is something. That is the thing. <laughs> Men like practi- like they want something practical. Why? It's Why would they give you a tire for your bike, <laughs> for example? Don't give one. Give four. <laughs> no. Um, I'm not saying. Uh, I think men appreciate practical things because they will utilize them. Mm-hmm. Women have more of an emotional attachment. Uh, men have more of an unapplicability attachment for mm-hmm. example women will desire flowers yes for like uh, let's say birthday present or Red something rose, lo- long stem yes it will be there with bouquet i don't know carnations lilies yes. what um, you have that bouquet those ones you you moved mm-hmm. now a guy on the other hand <laughs> you give him flowers he'll be like mm, thank you i've seen them i've put them there Flowers are not going to do anything for me. <laughs> How do I derive a sense anything of from meaning me. from it? So you find that maybe they have a deeper connection to something. So you may find a man would then much rather prefer getting maybe, uh, like let's say, sneakers or shoes because they will wear them every time, and every time they put them on, it will be a reminder that oh, this person thought about me. The functionality and the ability to come back and use the item creates the joyful element. It's uh-huh. like also for you as a lady. You may say you love flowers, but if they put their flowers on a handbag, which one would you be more drawn to? Personally, I would pick flowers in it. But if you ask a large number of ladies, <laughs> of course, some of them yes, will actually the pivot towards the handbag. Mm-hmm. And every time they use the handbag, the memory will trigger. And they'll feel like, oh. Timothy, you're going to change my mind about flowers. Leave me. <laughs> I leave you alone. Okay, let me drink juice. Because <laughs> now you're talking about uh, the practicability. And I actually see a handbag would be more applicable than flowers. After, after like six after. months, you will remember that the bag was a gift. Mm. You will forget that the flowers were ever given. Be there. Mm. Okay. Mm. So men actually like gifts, like to be appreciated. Yes, um, but some men, men are different. I think it all comes down to people's love language and their personalities. Mm-hmm. Um, some people may want the words of affirmation. Yes. You know, um, men sometimes love, love positive feedback, but many times they won't get it from any other places because every time they are maybe in a state of giving, searching, hunting, because uh, men are naturally providers. Mm. So they will go out of their way to maybe provide security, provide a home, provide resources and all of that. So you sometimes find, uh, like some women sometimes say, he doesn't love me. He's always he's busy. Always busy. Yeah. But for him, his expression of love to you is, is by going out and providing these things. Mm. If my wife has a home, if my children have a home, if there's a roof over their head, over our heads, if there is a meal that is present, in the provision they believe they're expressing love. You get. Because we also have to understand that the definitions of love vary. Mm -hmm. Uh, Like if you look back at our parents, our parents were not the type who kept on saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. They didn't love each other. They didn't tell themselves. Oh, you were not there when they told themselves. (laughs) Because you have to ask yourself, where did 15 children come from or 10 children? Because there must have been some love, but yeah. you, are not, you are not privy to the, to the communication of the love. And the PDN, mm. I think. I but you realize from them to us as children, what they were doing was expressing their love for us in things. Mm. I have paid that. for your school fees. I have bought you clothes. I have fed you. Um, you need pocket money, I have okay. sent it. Mm. You're sick, I have cared for you. 
is that not love? Is a question someone can ask. Care can even be love. Mm. And maybe it's For the For the person that appreciates the, the care. Mm. I think so. Okay, too much wisdom. Um, so we need, what I want our viewers now to, we need to learn that our husbands like practical gifts. That's what, okay, that's my takeaway. The things mm. I've struggled with. <laughs> mm. Like if I, if I want to give you a gift, why, do I, why must I buy a battery? Why must mm. I, you know? But mm. from the way you're explaining it, I'm, trying, I'm, I'm actually getting to understand that for them, they're looking at the practicability mm. of the gift that you've given them. Yes, but also you. it's important to understand your person. That's mm. the most important thing. Because some, some people don't, don't mind practical gifts. Mm. For them, it's more of an emotional connection. Mm. Um, for some men, I know, uh, like some of my friends who were having a conversation sometime and were gifting uh, one of the bosses where I worked. And we were really faced with a very big challenge of what gift do we get for him? Because if we wanted to get a car, he has a car. Has if we want car. to get a TV, he has a TV. If you want to get a phone, he has a phone. As a result, all the options of the physical things you would want to provide, he yes. has. Mm. However, the one thing that he wanted, that he did not even know he wanted, was an emotional connection. As we were bidding him farewell, people came and they spoke. People signed on cards. People gave him... Uh, words people spoke and gave words of uh, how he had impacted them and helped them mm. and his best friend was right next to me and he came and told me this is the best gift that you've ever given him that tv you bought for him it doesn't mean anything anything else you've brought doesn't mean anything but yes. this is something mm. that you will remember so it comes down to people's emotions uh, mm. and the people they are i would me my personal take would be Get something that the person genuinely loves. A man will not express that, oh, I, I, want, a, I want a football jersey. Mm -hmm. He may consistently be watching the match and what, and the new season has come around. The new jersey has come out. If you as a wife took your time and said, okay, he supports this team, they have released a new jersey, and you go out of your way to then buy something, it can go a very long way in, in causing uh, them to feel valued and appreciated. So that means I have to learn football people, then I have to know the team he's supporting. You have to learn so your you spouse. To, you have to learn your spouse. Mm. But does it affect marriages at all? Yes. Because they may be putting on all, in all that work for nothing. No, you're, you're not. Whatever is done in marriage is not for nothing. Mm. Whatever you do in marriage is a seed that's sown towards another day of happiness and joy. Let me give an example. If I say, um, if I say to my wife, um, let's go out for dinner, mm. it might seem insignificant, but it's a day of less pressure of how worrying, what am I going to prepare at home? Mm. If I said, let's go on holiday without the children, she will wake up and realize that, oh, for maybe a week, I am not worried about the children, what they are wearing, what they are doing. I'm not worried about what food is happening, or what food is being prepared. Don't they have to that. do those things before you go for the holiday? <laughs> you will have to. You can prepare before, but uh, sometimes I uh, was speaking with a few married friends of mine, uh, a lady in particular, and she said, you know, the hard thing about being a lady is we are thinking about so many so things. Many. We wake up, we are thinking about lunch, we are thinking about dinner, breakfast. we are thinking about breakfast. The then we are clothes. thinking about the children, then school, the husband homework. Clothes. Then the husband needs uh, what? Needs to also go for his meeting. He has this important meeting. He needs to be smart. Mm. But he keeps on wearing this shirt. I need to make sure he wears another yes. shirt yes. so that people don't think my husband has one shirt. <laughs> then you have... So all those thoughts are consistently the busyness of the lady's mind. Mm. Now when you give her a holiday, it's like a break from all of that. It's a place where now the lady can pause and be like, what is but really But do we actually mind? pause? I don't think. <laughs> but I uh, think that's a start, actually, yes. Mm. So uh, uh, over time, we've come to actually realize, I think this is just for you to re-echo some of the things you said. We have known, or oh, it's been said, men, men are receiving. Mm. 
Hankies. What are they receiving as Hankies vests. Uh huh, vest socks and socks. Mm. And 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 over time it's honestly because we, we have learned that men either don't need these things mm-hmm. or they don't appreciate the things that we are doing. Mm. Or a man in his own there's a way the men hold themselves like this it's not important. What is not important? Being appreciated. For me, let me appreciate you. Let me spoil you. And there are those who actually go all the way. Mm. But you find the women, the woman receiving mm. does not feel the need to reciprocate what this person is doing. I think, I don't know if I've understood your question. You, you've seen couples where the man gives and gives. Leave alone the men yes. who actually, there are those who really don't give. Mm. But those who appreciate and you see every day he's trying. To but give. on the other hand, mm. the, the woman who's receiving these things mm. does not see the need to appreciate this man. Mm. Um, I think maybe it comes back to like, let's say, love languages. I don't know if, if, if that makes sense. Sometimes people... Um, how do I put it? Let me use my wife as an example and myself. Mm. My wife is not a person who loves gifts. Mm. She loves gifts, but it's not something that will make her really get excited. Wow. What she would prefer is quality time mm. or words of affirmation as her love language. Mm. I, on the other hand, I don't really love gifts. But if I am to get a gift, it has to really be a thoughtful gift. Like, like you don't. Time has been taken. Like you, not that that time has been taken. Just, just to know that you are listening to me when I was speaking. Mm. If let's say I have been in a situation, uh, like let me give a real true story. So my wife, please forgive me when you watch this. <laughs> um. So it was my birthday one 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 particular time, and I had been wanting a speaker, a Bluetooth speaker. Mm-hmm. I could buy it for myself, but I was mm. like, let me leave her with an opportunity to get me something. Mm, to gift you. So my birthday reaches, and she's like, oh, morning, how are you? So today we are going to take you for lunch, and then we'll go for dinner, mm. and then we'll come back, and we'll have a nice day. Don't you think that would be a nice birthday? I just looked at her and said, but honestly, is that the gift that you're giving me? But I did like, get started. No. <laughs> Isn't it what you would like? I'm like, yes, those things would be nice. But mm. what I really want is this. And she was like, eh, okay. And she went out. Uh, it wasn't the day of my birthday. It was the week of, like, on your birthday, this is what we are going to do. Mm. We'll go here, we'll go watch a movie. Whatever. Celebrate the whole but week. But the thing is, we eat food every day. So that is not something new. Yay. I won't get excited by food. I won't get excited by us going on a date because we do go on dates. So it was nothing which will be uh, a short stop. Mm. The kabozi will be the same. It's not <laughs> like you're going to now suddenly Sembu over here is someone who we are going to meet with who is uh, spectacular. Mm. No. So I then communicated, this is what I would want. And she got to realize that, oh, okay. All these things exist, but there's the there's the real need, yeah. there's the real want. And when I got that gift, my gosh, I talked about it until it got lost. I was so happy. <laughs> I was like, hey, my speaker, hey. and consistently, it was a reminder of the fact that my wife took off time to appreciate and value me, mm. and that's and that's something that goes a long way. Now you talk about socks, vests, uh, hankies, and all those things. We're talking about it recently with a guy friend, and they said, ah, you know, they keep on giving us socks, they keep on giving us this. But then the thing is, sometimes, as guys, that's the thing that we forget to buy. Yes, this is like So it's gifts. like, eh, hey, Bambi, I actually did need socks. Hmm. But sometimes you can go above and beyond. So don't ask about <laughs> socks. That's what I would say. Yeah. Hmm. I, and uh, yeah, there's something I wanted to ask about that. Hmm. But... Oh dear, there's something I wanted to ask you about that very statement. But anyway, so we have learned that men need to be appreciated, mm. but we need to study the person. Know yes. the person, not just gift them because... Don't just gift for... Give a gift where the person will be like, you really know me. But don't you think also what you did was nice? If you tell me I need a speaker, I can't go and buy a, I'll buy a speaker. Mm. So don't you think people should also be a bit more obvious about their wants and... 
I think maybe you could you need to be uh, more intentional about how you ask mm. uh, and find out what they want. Uh, your husband has a best friend, for example. Ask the best friend, what does he really want? And he will tell you. Ask him mm. if someone Am was I not to supposed to be my husband's best friend. Anyway, we're <laughs> going to take a short break. And when you come back, Timothy is going to continue telling us about how to actually how to find out which gifts our husbands <laughs> want. Don't go away. I'm Fiona Mboa here at Church of Uganda Family TV with Ring Diaries. Uh, welcome back. This is Fiona Mboa here at Church of Uganda Family TV with Ring Diaries. And with me is Timothy. And we're discussing appreciating our spouses. And before we went for the break, Timothy was telling us that we need to find practical ways of appreciating our spouses. And I hope he will tell us, give us some of those <laughs> practical mm. ways. But before that, Timothy, um, how do I know? No, before how do I know? How do I tell my, if I'm feeling I'm unappreciated, mm. how do I tell my spouse that, I, you know what? Without sounding nagging. Mm. Mm. That you feel unappreciated. Mm. That is a that is a hard question um, to to answer uh, because uh, for lack of a better word, it's not a one size fits all response that can apply. Definitely. Because every relationship, every marriage is different. Mm. Um, for some couples, it's easy to say, ah, "No nah, way, you haven't appreciated me in a while." I feel, I feel like I'm just there. Mm -hmm. They can say it in a joking way, like like that. Mm -hmm. For others, they find communication or, or raising certain topics a bit more difficult, and so maybe it's a bit of a process. I think, I think uh, maybe I would ask this question: um, If you feel like you're being unappreciated. Uh, also look inside you have you also been appreciating <laughs> uh, because you may sometimes be expecting something from someone that you've also not given them mm -hmm. and sometimes the good thing is if you practically appreciate a person there's a subconscious desire subconscious to reciprocate if for example um, when we when we are seated here and you offer me a glass of juice and let's say uh, we meet again somewhere, mm -hmm. and let's say the way you offered me the glass of juice was something memorable, I would then go out of my way to do something small. It may not be probably a glass of juice, maybe it might be like, oh, let me buy you a snack, let's have lunch or something of the sort. Mm -hmm. um, what I'm saying is uh, not to use Newton's third law of motion, but <laughs> for every action, there's an equal and opposite an reaction. reaction. Mm -hmm. But have you been acting to warrant a reaction? Have you been appreciating to then be appreciated? And if you've, if you've been doing that and you don't feel it present, I think it's also important to just speak about it. Yeah, much as it's very difficult sometimes to have that conversation, mm -hmm. it's important that you do so, so that at the end of the day, the other person knows how you are feeling. The other person gets to know that this is something that affects your emotions. This is something that affects my heart. I don't feel appreciated. But for some ladies, we say he should know this. But if you assume, if you mm. consistently assume, mm. no one will know. It's like with the hospital. You go into the doctor's office, don't they still ask you, how are you? They of course you're there, you're sick. Mm. So what reason <laughs> would you have come for? They know you're sick, but they need to ask you, what are you feeling? Mm. so they can be able to then diagnose you. Mm. Same with appreciation. Mm. Do not assume that... That someone uh, knows. That someone knows. A person may be there and actually feeling they are doing a terrific job in loving They're at 110. They may be feeling they're at 150 percent. But if you are to ever sit down, and we had... We, me and my wife had a conversation sometime while we were going through some material. And the question that was asked of us um, to discuss was one which really caused like a pause and reflection moment. The question was, when was the last time you felt truly loved by your spouse? And me, I was like, yeah, I'm expecting it to be like last week, yesterday, <laughs> what? And she gave, she, she thought for a bit, and just by virtue of the fact that she had taken time to think about it, That's true. it made me realize that, eh, it's a distant memory. 
Mm. But now my wife has very high standards of love. Ah, so uh, but they are her standards. But they are her standards mm-hmm. and because I'm married to her, they are our standards. Yeah. So I can't I can't fault her for that. Mm. Um if I can do something and other friends are like, Oh, you've done this, you're so romantic, it doesn't count. It doesn't count. It's my wife's mm. my wife's count which matters. Mm. And so I think I've veered off the point. <laughs> I think it's important for you to have the to conversation it, and articulate yeah. it mm. so that the other person knows and they can be able then to work on it and not assume that they know about it because in their minds they might be loving you on the basis of how they learned how to love or mm. how they define love as. Have you mm. ever asked your spouse, what is love to you? When you get that answer is when you start to now unlock the answers of how would the person maybe want to be appreciated mm-hmm. or want to be loved? And that's where you will then get to the root of how do I appreciate my spouse or how do I want to be appreciated? And my mm-hmm. spouse gets to understand that. Wow. So if, if, if it is reversed and I realize my spouse is not feeling appreciated, mm. should I bring it up or I, I just enjoy the anonymity not knowing <laughs> I think I think it's it's important that you do bring it up because uh, letting your relationship get to a place of complacency is a painful place mm-hmm. uh, because imagine if if uh, let's say it's it's a, it's a very funny story that I don't know how to put it so I went for a wedding once and I will not forget this sermon because it was one that was so relatable and they said. Uh, don't let someone else do for your spouse what you used to do for them or what you can do for them. In the sense that if you have consistently sacrificed for your spouse and maybe taken them out on dates and things like that, and now someone else is taking up that place, that means someone else is occupying what is meant to be yours. If let's say your spouse has a desire to travel and experience the world, And they are not experiencing that with you, but with someone else. Uh, This is how how issues begin in workplaces. A workmate uh, is the one feeling the void of what you should have done. And you're there assuming, oh, my wife is okay. She's She's happy. She's getting to do what she wants. But you'll find, like, uh, for lack of a better word, her love tank is being filled elsewhere. Mm -hmm. And she may not even recognize it. She just says, oh, I'd like to go and spend time with my friends. Oh, I'd like to go and spend time with this. That That is also like a bit of a symptom of something. If your wife or spouse is consistently like, I'd like to spend some time elsewhere, you may find that they find more appreciation or valuation elsewhere. So do not be there and say, hmm, my wife is not complaining. Mm. So they may come with a king of worry. Because you will find out uh, later down the road that you are not the center of their lives. You are not the person they they feel truly, most truly appreciated by. You will find that when you have a Mukolo function, Should they are speaking goals. about the friends. When you find that you're, you're, let's say, going somewhere and you have a conflicting invitation, like let's say we are having a family gathering and my friends are going for lunch, she'll be like, but I need to go out with my friends. And you're like, hey, okay. You realize that Maybe there is something that you've not been doing. I'm not saying that's a symbol, but no, in but that's, extreme that's cases, a symptom. it's mm. a symptom. But very small. Mm. Yeah. Is that very small? No, it's not, Timothy. It's, it depends. It really depends. Because uh, some people are different. Like I, I met a friend of mine recently at a concert and they said, and I asked them, hey, where is your spouse? And they said, my spouse can't come for a concert because it's too loud for them. They can't be here. It's too loud for them. But then uh, when it comes to everything else, like let's say going for lunches, moving, uh, movies, or going on dates, all those things, he will do them wholeheartedly. But he just can't go for concerts because he finds that he will get a migraine mm, at the end of it. Those ones are too loud, I agree. But <laughs> there the are instances where you find a spouse, actually, as you say, they're delegating most of and they are comfortable with mm. it. Like you want to go for lunch, why don't you go with your friend? Why don't you go like... Mm. Because we don't have the same maybe likes. Mm. So for for someone to help me with some of those things, mm. I am relieved. Mm. But now you're, you're, you're bringing it out in a way that actually 
you repl- someone is replacing you in mm. some of those aspects yes i think the element of replacement is a place which which we should strive to not happen in, in our marriages um yes our spouses can't be everything for us our spouses mm. can't be uh, god forbid the statement the most funny person your spouse can't be the most exciting person your spouse can't be the one who wants to do exactly what you want to do. Your spouse is uniquely your spouse in the person that they are. Mm-hmm. But then when you consistently find yourself seeking someone else to do the things that you would ordinarily want to do with your spouse, that's where the red flag is. That's where you realize the alarm bells are going off. Because at this point in time, you are at a place where your spouse is seeking all these things from somewhere else and you're unknowingly becoming housemates or roommates Mm -hmm. and just starting to coexist with one another wow 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 so we need to communicate when we're not feeling appreciated absolutely we need to communicate we need to communicate like when a person (laughs) has like when a child has a stomach ache they would need to communicate that it's their stomach that hurts them just crying endlessly leaves you in a guessing game. Did you hit your toe? Head? Did you hit this? <laughs> Are you feeling like this? Are you feeling like this? Then you find out it's a stomach ache. Mm. But if they told you, you didn't have to go through all that mm. time of guessing. Mm. Yeah. So one of the what what you were talking about is one of the effects of feeling unappreciated. Mm. What are the other effects of feeling unappreciated apart from seeking it from elsewhere? Um I think the communication and the intimacy starts to dwindle. Um, you start to find that the excitement and joy that was present at the moment when you said I do um, is starting to fizzle away. Mm. I think that is something that looks very different for every single person and everyone in a relationship where where what they find dear or what they find important varies. So I, I really don't know if I'm answering your question, but I think it just varies. Mm. Mm. But obviously it has a negative effect on our marriages. So why is it something that we don't give a lot of time? I think it fundamentally comes down to the blueprints of our love or mm. the blueprints of our nature. Um who was the first person that you saw in love what was the first picture of love now let me ask you who was the first person you saw in love that made you say oh i want to be in love (laughs) do you want to learn asking questions (laughs) yeah it's your show but uh, i also need to drink juice and listen to you Mm -hmm. no i think the first person the first picture of love that i saw was my great grandparents Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what was the picture of love? Was they were they spending time together? Yes. Were they doing things together? Was he saying I love you? Or was he buying her flowers? <laughs> Definitely not flowers. <laughs> but it's amazing I met them at a function. I had not met them. Mm. So this very old woman tells me, They separated us. Where is my husband? So I look mm. at him like Mm. Okay, who is looking for a husband? Like, can I sit next to my husband? Mm. So I'm, I'm intrigued. Like, mm. why is an old woman asking for a husband? Mm. So we brought the husband, put a seat for the husband. You can see. She told me, I don't like to be separated from my husband. Mm. He's my friend. He's mm. my. I looked at this people. I'm like, okay, mm. this is now what I would want in my mind. So now, do you now realize that for you today? That is actually something that you want. Exactly. You want to be next to your spouse. That's the blueprint. Oh, um, the the host. <laughs> that is interesting, though. Mm. Our mm. love, our definitions of love, our definitions of relationship, our definitions of happiness are all shaped from a blueprint. And the blueprint is just our initial first time experiences with them. If the first time you see a dog, uh, it was it was very cuddly and nice and all of that. You will love dogs. If the first time you see a dog, it's chasing you and barking and, and you're running away, you're you will hate dogs. It's like even people who don't like cats. Like personally, I don't like cats. My first experience with a kitten 
a kitten scratched me. And I'm like, ah. and every time they are there, they just put hair everywhere. I don't like them. <laughs> it's not like something I would go out of my way to say, oh, let's buy a cat. Mm. I'll buy a cat if I have rats at home. But I won't be like, oh, we need to get a cat. They are so They're so cute. Zero. It's just because the blueprint which has been set has set a particular standard. And mm. that's what would be my answer. Okay. Interesting. So, Timothy, now, for the women out there, what are some of the practical ways? We can, because I know men have eh, mm. their, on their A game. Now, at least a man who doesn't appreciate the wife mm. just doesn't want. Because every, mm -hmm. everywhere you look, there are gifts for women. There are particular articulated gifts. There's flowers. But there are many gifts for men. Like what? Shh. Apart from vests and... and, and go go socks. on Google and write gifts for men except vests and socks. <laughs> No, you but see so many those practical things that can actually touch a man's heart. Because most of the people say, we don't know how to give men. Men are mm. difficult to gift. I think we are difficult to gift because what we sometimes truly desire or want as a gift is really expensive. I don't know if that makes sense. Like, okay, let, okay, me, give you a, let me give you a true answer. If mm. someone wanted to gift me at this very moment, mm. I would want a car as a gift. I, but then it's also an unrealistic <laughs> expectation of yes. people. Mm. If, uh, if let's say, someone wanted to gift me, uh, let's say, three or four or five years ago, mm. it, was this, it was a Bluetooth speaker that I wanted. Mm. If someone was to gift me... And it's also not cheap. Mm -hmm. It's also not cheap. Mm -hmm. And so sometimes you may say, ah, men, men don't like gifts. It's because sometimes the thing that we truly want is expensive. expensive. Maybe that is it. But then the thing is, study your person. And then when you study them and understand them, and maybe even through asking their friends what they really want, you'll find out that Bambi, it's actually something very simple. Maybe they want, uh, like guys like playing football a lot, maybe they want like a particular pair of boots. Their boots are not doing too well. You as a mm. lady may never know, but the friend will actually tell you. He may find it's, it's like... Uh, something practical that they may want they may want like maybe new earphones because guys sometimes like listening to music and enjoying themselves you may find even it's something very funny like a car radio guys mm. are different you may find if it's a guy in now like in the village you'll be like man i just need a new car or something like that a new car yeah uh, people are different men are different we are we are an interesting breed of humans ah. Although we are the only other breed of humans. Yes, but the other one is easy. At least you know a lady, you'll give them this and they'll be... Eh. Uh, you haven't met ladies who then don't like gifts. Because the few who I know will be like... Mm, 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 mm. Because I've, I've noticed we have, we have a marriage fellowship and uh, every end of... Every October we gift, we mm. get gift. But every time we are asked to gift men, oh my God. Mm. You see, I'm like, now what do I give this man? Mm. And, and usually, we, like most ladies actually struggle gifting men. Mm. But what you've said today has actually enlightened me, and I hope some of our viewers, or if not all, mm. the practicability of what, one, what does your husband want, but also you need a practical gift, mm. something that will work for them. Okay, that's nice. Appreciation. I, I don't know, it's, it's something, okay, now maybe we've looked a lot at gifts and what, but there are these things of saying thank you. Yes. Simple, that's, mm. that, how, why are they hard? Why are they hard? Yes. For who? Why are they hard? Do you know that people have been married for years and they ask you when was the last time your husband told you thank you and you actually literally have to, well, when I gave birth. They say thank you. <laughs> and that is where it stops. Why is it so hard to appreciate people? I think it just comes back down to blueprints. If I was growing up and I never had people say thank you, it would be hard for me to but say thank you. We didn't know people, people never used to use phones. We are adjusting with the time. Mm. So why aren't, we, why aren't we appreciating our spouses? I think it's because we are... To, why aren't we appreciating our spouses? I think it's because we do not sometimes see the need to. We are probably not saying thank you or um, 
I appreciate what you do. I love the way you raise our children and all of that. Simply because we assume that you know it. Because I assume you know it, mm. I believe that's something that's obvious to you. Mm. And as a result, I don't do it. And so maybe as society or people, we just need to just maybe change that mindset to a place where we get to uh, understand and realize that some of these small things go a long way. Mm. Uh, because a thank you for a meal makes me realize that, oh, what I have done is very nice. Yes. A thank you for uh, for maybe going out of your way to prepare for me. I think I think those small things are more of good manners. Mm-hmm. Um, but they are very, very important because they play a pivotal part in people's lives. Mm-hmm. I, I really can't I am not I am not qualified enough to answer that. I know, question. I know. I know, but, know, but yeah. I think we need to really make it a point to appreciate us mm. it makes a difference. So let me ask you another question. Oh good. Uh, pressure, pressure, pressure. Yes. When did you last appreciate your spouse and do you think your spouse feels appreciated? Timothy, I will not answer <laughs> I'm not going to answer that. Mm. But <laughs> me I wanted to ask another question before I answer <laughs> Now, for, for spouses that say that the gift they want is peace and quiet, mm. what do you do for those ones? You give them peace and quiet? And what else? Oh, wait. I you will away. find that. <laughs> no, they may want peace and quiet, which is real peace and quiet. But then you also have to ask yourself, why do they want peace what and quiet? Want? You may find that, let's say, home is very noisy and all of that. But if you have children, can you do away with the noise? You can't do away with the noise, but you can creatively find a solution. Let's go out and let's let's send the kids to visit someone. Peace and quiet is created. Let's let's go and spend a night outside. Peace and quiet is created. But if I'm part of the noise? But if you're part of the noise? <laughs> <clears throat> then you need to find your silent mode button. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, but I think bottom line and... Um, my big takeaway mm. from this is we need to learn our spouses, learn yes. what speaks to them, mm. and for men, buy practical gifts, at least buy practical gifts as much as you can. Mm. So as we come to a conclusion of this, Timothy, I want you to just give a word to our viewers mm. about appreciating our spouses. Mm. Just for someone, who, because some women actually don't want to get married, because mm. they know once you cross that line, the gift stop. Everything stops. Mm. So, like, let's keep dating a little longer <laughs> and enjoy this. And this enjoy process. the gifts. Yes, while they still last. Nah. So, for for our viewers out there, well, what would be the word that you leave for them about about mm. appreciation? All right. Um, for those watching, what I would say in line with appreciation is, uh, just recognize appreciation is like watering your love tank or filling your love tank. Mm. Appreciate your spouse. Take time to celebrate them. Uh, to let them know that you love and value them. Because if you don't, someone else will start doing that for you. And then... <laughs> yes, otherwise, someone else will, may start doing it. And mm. not before long, you realize your spouse is gravitating away from you. Not in the sense that they are looking for someone else, but they just don't feel the same around you. Invest in the initial goosebumps since this is Ring Diaries. Invest in that that emotional high that you had when you were engaged or dating. Try and look back for that first love and ask yourself, what are the things that you did then that you're not doing now? You realize that appreciation is probably one of those things and try and do those things again. That's what I would say. Wow. Thank you very much, Timothy, for, 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 for the time and also for that great information. I know our viewers out there have picked a word or two. Honestly, I think I'm, I've benefited the most. My husband is going to benefit the most from, mm. from this. I have learned to appreciate, but also to be practical, but also to understand why someone would want a battery as a gift. Like, I've never understood that. <laughs> so thank you very much for the time. And uh, viewers, thank you very much for watching. Please appreciate your spouse. Say that thank you, that I love you. Because you loved them 10 years ago, that doesn't mean they still remember Keep reminding us that we are beautiful. Keep telling us those nice things. And it will go a long way to making our marriages better. Thank you very much for watching. I'm Fiona Mboa here at Church of Uganda Family TV. 
with the Mindaries.